Hey guys, it's Arcade and I'm back with another video. And in this one, I'm gonna show you a new plugin called MIDIQ, which helps you create chord progressions. So I reviewed a few MIDI plugins before on my channel, but this one has to be the simplest one yet. So it's really easy to use, really straightforward. So let me show you how it works and how we can use it in practice. If you wanna get this plugin, the link will be below in the description. You can actually get a free demo version to try it out so you can see if it's something you would be interested in having or not. So yeah, now let me show you how it works. Let me just put on my headphones. I'm gonna show you all the features and I'm gonna actually show you how I can use it in a song that I created. So here is a song that I created. It's actually created from the previous project that I created in my video. I said created way too many times there, but yeah, it's from the same project. It sounds a little bit different and I actually changed all the chords and melodies. So I made this chord progression using the MIDI Q plugin. Uh, I'm gonna show you how it sounds and then we are going to make a completely new chord progression and a new melody as well. So here is what I created before using the MIDI Q. So yeah, sounds pretty cool, I think. Just to clarify, this is to make chord progressions, not the melodies, but it can help you with the melodies as well. So yeah, let me show you how it works. So first we gotta set it up so it actually creates any sound. The way you do that, you go to the plugin, you click on it, go to the settings, which is the wrapper settings, and change the output port to one. Now remember this number, output port one, then we go to the sound that we actually want to be played. For me, it's the serum preset. So we click on it. We go to the same settings again, and we change input port to one. So we want to have the output and input port on the same number for the sound you actually want to hear is the input port and for MIDI cue is the output port. So now when we press play on the pattern, the MIDI cue is actually playing. I like to put a note in here just so this pattern doesn't disappear. But yeah, it essentially doesn't matter if you press any notes in the piano roll, it doesn't play them. It only plays like when you play the song. So yeah, that's how it works. Now let's check it out. We can actually make it bigger, which is nice. We have a few presets here that you can test out. This one definitely doesn't work with chords, but some of them work with chords. Some are better for other sounds. Uh, let me actually load the default preset and let's work with this. So the first thing is the trigger, which is how fast the chords will trigger, essentially how fast they will play. This is way too fast. So I like to change it to one, which is just like a standard length of a chord. Uh, you can go with anything, you can experiment there. Uh, then we have the pitch, which I want to change right away because as you can hear, this is way too high, so let's just change it to like 0 0.4. So this doesn't actually change the key of the chords, it just changes the pitch. Then we actually have the key, we can uh, select any key we want. So we can change the key and it will change the chord progression accordingly. And then you have these shapes, which they don't actually use the name of the chords. You have these shapes which you can change and that will also change the chord progression. So if we, for example, change this one to this. Or let's try this one. So it just changes the chord progression accordingly based on the shape. It's almost a little bit random. I cannot say I understand how exactly it works because I don't. I don't know what happens if I change it to this shape or whatever. So I would say it's a bit random, but every time you change the shape, it will change the chord progression but the chords actually go well with another. So no matter what you change it to, you will always end up with a chord progression that makes sense in the key. So as you can see, we have the same shape on these two chords, so they actually play the same chord as well. So if we change the shape, the chord progression changes again. Another thing you can do is click it again, 
and actually change the different variations of the chord progressions. So we have nine of them. Uh, then you can also add more chords if you want to and change the shape of them as well. And then again, it will change the whole chord progression up. And if you like one of the chords, for example, this A sharp minor, you can lock it. It will stay A sharp minor unless you change it. You can change it to anything you want, but all the other chords will also change accordingly. So they fit with the chord you selected. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's a little bit random, but I like that about it because it lets you create chord progressions that you wouldn't usually make, which is nice. You can also change the number of voices, which is just how many notes one chord will have. And then you have this off key, which uh, sort of plays with the key of the chords. Okay, let's uh, load a default preset and let's uh, create a chord progression that I will actually like and want to use in the song. And then I'm going to show you how you can transfer this chord progression and use it properly in the song. So yeah, uh, let's pitch it down. And let's try a few different. Okay. Okay, I like this chord progression. So to be honest, I kind of ended up on it randomly. You just play around with the different shapes and different chords and it ends up sounding like something you like. So I like this chord progression that we have here. So what we can do now is actually export it. So we just drag it into our serum preset and we have it here as MIDI which is awesome. So one thing you want to do then is go here and change the output port to none. So it doesn't actually play when you press play. So we kind of muted it. So now that we have the chord progression exported in here, we can actually put it in the song. Let me just copy it, go to chords, put it in the chords, go to chords layer, put it in there, go to the bass. And of course we don't want the bass notes in the bass sound. So what we do is just have the root notes of the chords in here. And if you don't know which one are the bass notes, it's usually when you go to MIDI queue, it's usually these ones, the names of the chords. So A, F sharp, E, B. So that should be the bass notes. A, F sharp, E, B. So it sort of goes down. Let me just put this one octave up. Sounds pretty good. Let's copy this, put it in the gritty bass. And also this, this bass. Okay, now let's uh, disable the melody. We should pretty much have a new chord progression, pretty much a new song, not really, but a new composition for the song ready. So that's how fast you can change like a song composition, just by creating a chord progression in here dragging it into the MIDI and putting it on the sounds that you actually want in the song. So now it sounds like this. So yeah, that's our chord progression in the song right there. We can actually edit it a little bit to make it more interesting. So again, I'm just clicking the sound I want, control C, pasting it, control V. And we do the same for the bass. And again, copy these sounds. So yeah, let's hear it now. Oh yeah, the 
bass is supposed to be like this. And now we can actually add the melody in as well. So in theory, it should be in E major key, but I find that sometimes it's just not true. But if we go here and go to helpers, scale highlighting, we choose major and we go here again, which is E. These should be the notes we could use for this chord progression. Let's see if it's true. So yeah, that actually worked out pretty well. So one tip I can give you for making the melody while using MIDI Q, if you go to MIDI Q and you see the keys E major, and then you go to your melody sound, go to helpers, scale highlighting, select major, and the root note is E, then all the highlighted notes that are grayed out should be the notes that you can actually use for this chord progression. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so I wouldn't count on this, but it can help you out in some cases for sure. So yeah, when making the melody, I just like to play the song and add in the notes while playing the song. Again, I don't like to count on helpers, I just kind of do it based on what I hear. So yeah, here is what I created today. Let's have a listen. And yeah, that's how simple it is to create new chord progressions with MIDI-Q. Make sure to check it out, link will be below in the description. You can actually test it out yourself for free, and then if you like it, you can buy it. If you want to learn more about how I created this song that I actually used for this video, check out my previous video where I showed how I created this project. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.